Hi everybody, this is Amy Elmont with Teller Netcast, and joining me here today is Mark Platten with the CSU Extension. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Amy. Good to be here again. Good to have you here again. Really appreciate it. And today we're going to be talking about 4-H. What is 4-H? What are all those H's about anyway? What do they do? Um, so can you just start out, give us a synopsis. What is 4-H? Absolutely. So 4-H is the extension. So CSU is Colorado State University, so we're tied to the university. It's our land-grant university for Colorado. Every state has a land-grant university, at least one. Uh, ours is, of course, CSU. So extension is the outreach from that. So we provide programming in the local arena, and one of our flagship programs is 4-H. Um, 4-H is the largest youth program in the United States, uh, be- having between 6 and 7 million youth involved every year in 4-H. Oh, my gosh. Um, when you asked about what the 4-H's are, that's what everybody wants to know. So the 4-H's <laughs> Are there actually for, H's? There are there H's. Are. <laughs> what they stand for, the first one is head. So it's kind of what we're thinking. So we're having really good, clear thoughts about things. The heart, you know, making sure we bring our heart into each and every action that we do, all the projects that we create. Um, our hands. Uh, 4-H's motto is we, you know, it's it's about doing. It's hands-on activities. So our projects, our, all the stuff we do are hands-on activities. So it's how we use our hands to create, to manifest. And then the final H is health. Um, again, you can have all the other H's in line, but if your health isn't there, then, of course, it's, it's, it's you know, we're not fully healthy and whole, right? Right, absolutely. It's not well, I know a lot of people think about 4-H kids and horses and agriculture. Is that all it is? It sounds like maybe there's more to it than just that. Well, there is. I mean, and really 4-H started kind of a little historical background. 4-H started a little over 100 years ago. Um, really, as a, some of the, in, in our rural communities 100 years ago, the majority of people didn't have electricity, didn't mm-hmm. have running water, didn't have plumbing, uh, or, oh. or yeah, so their outhouse was actually like exterior to their house. house. It was yeah. out of the house. <laughs> and... They didn't have a lot of, you know, the, the same seeds that they were growing that they had gotten from their father and from their father, the farmers and ranchers and so forth, kind of using the same kind of tools that they had for generations. Mm-hmm. And the research was going on in the university level, and the professors would go out and try to get in the fields and literally in the fields and, and try to convince the farmers to adopt new seed varieties. But the farmers were, you know, not very trustworthy or trusting of, you know, government or educators or people who thought they knew more than, than the farmers did, okay. coming down and telling them what to do. Right. So we kind of went around it and asked if they could have their sons take an acre of land and grow some corn. This started in Iowa wow. a little over 100 years ago. And lo and behold, these, these group of, of sons grew about an acre on each of their farms. And lo and behold, they produced about double, the, double or more the bushels per acre than what their fathers were doing, which kind of got that their... probably got their dad's attention, it I would did. imagine. It did. So this is how kind of 4-H kind of got its start. So okay. they, the first 4-H clubs are called corn clubs into other avenues. But certainly 4-H is anchored in our ag. Um, that's our historic foundation. Okay. Uh, that's where we came from. That in the family consumer science. So teaching people how to can so they didn't poison themselves, storage of food, processing of food, sewing and clothing so that they could clothe themselves uh, using some of the materials that were maybe naturally there on the farm. Um, but the question that you ask is it more than just agriculture? Absolutely. Nowadays, we fast forward 100 years in the future. Uh, certainly agriculture is our foundation still. It really is the, the basis of our 4-H program in pretty much every county. Okay. Um, Even non-rural counties? Or does well, it that's a good point. Really... So, so maybe in Denver would be, then the, the urban is, is primarily there. Okay. But certainly maybe then ur- most... urban garden, gardening. Absolutely. Back. Okay, so still get back to that, but... We still have the components of our agricultural okay. roots. But, or I should say... It's probably a better way of saying yeah. it. And now we're really tied into STEM, all those, the, the science, technology, engineering, math, the arts, uh, really doing projects from, from uh, model rocketry to uh, photography and leather craft and uh, uh, robotics and all these other computers and these kind of wow. things that are, so over 100 projects we have available for the youth to take throughout. And sons and daughters are included now? Absolutely. So, <laughs> you're a good, good, really good question. You know, How I was, you got me there? I'm like, hey, yeah, let's make so sure we... Absolutely. <laughs> so now, forward this hundred. Yep, yep. We moved forward. We've, we're progressing some there. We're we're becoming politically correct. We have forever, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, based on the time, you know, you do what's appropriate in the time you're working in. Absolutely. So yeah. definitely. Okay. Well, what kind of opportunities are there for leadership well, in four H? Yeah, sure. So. There's only one of me here in the county as far right. as managing the, the you extension been program. You haven't cloned yet? I you don't have, have I, multiple marks? I, no. no. <laughs> Your wife would probably like that. It's like, yes, yeah, send I'm this not mark sure. here. I think, I think one is probably <laughs> enough for anybody. <laughs> 
But anyway, there's one of you. So. There's one of me. So really to make our 4-H program work, we rely exclusively or very, very heavily on our volunteer cadre. Okay. Not only just as, as leading projects, but also in mid-level management tasks. So I have some of my managers doing putting together programs, mm-hmm. putting together uh, some of our camps and conferences that we do. They attend different leadership training and bring that back to, to provide uh, training back for our youth. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, huge there, volunteer opportunities. Are there <clears> youths <throat> that have been part of the program that then go on to help lead and become... Um, kind of the teachers after they've been students, do you find yeah, that? Yeah, that, that's really interesting with that, Amy, is, is absolutely for, for I guess because it, it, 4-H is more than just a three-month program and then you're out. It really yeah. kind of becomes a lifestyle. Hmm. And so what yeah. ends up happening, we see generationally that exactly that happening, that the kids will come in if they feel it's a good fit for them and they continue on from early on from age five all the way up through their senior year in high school. Hmm. They can continue on to college. They've got college programs with 4-H. But then they tend to come back and enroll in and become leaders in because they recognize the value that they receive yeah. by going through 4 and they want to give back in that way. Oh, and oftentimes, yeah. when they start having families, they then, their kids then. bring their kids in. So it's, oh, it's a cyclical wonderful. generational kind of thing, absolutely. Yeah. I imagine once you find something you have a passion for. It is. And keep it is. giving that time. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, right. Let's talk about county <clears throat> fairs. I guess my understanding has always been that the county fair is kind of the culmination of a 4-H program. Is is that true or is there, am I a little bit off on that? No, no, no you're actually pretty much spot on with that. Okay. In, in most counties, again, certainly the rural, more rural or any anyone who has a rural kind of aspect in their county, the the county fair is where the kids who have been doing their projects all year long, well, they come to showcase them. Okay. And so there are the, you know, we, again, we've got these indoor projects, which include the like the model rocketry and the and the uh, the oh, robotics nice. and some of those other things. And in that case, the kids meet with the, they, they're interviewed. So they okay. sit before a judge and the judge will ask them a bunch of questions and they'll be, they're, they're, their overall package is, is uh, or their project is evaluated on how their interview was, wow. the, the quality of their project, and as well as their record book. So these kids are keeping records early on. So we're creating these citizens that then can go on and know about record keeping, know yeah. about what the cost of their project was, um, which then, of course, leads into taxes and all those other things in, sure. you know, in the future. So we're creating citizens through this process. But but the county fair is where they showcase their project. Okay. Uh, on the livestock arena, literally arena, <laughs> the kids go in and they stay, they, you know, all the kids who are doing, let's say, swine, They'll bring all their animals out there, and they stand before a judge, and it's about not just what their animals look like, but what their showmanship quality is. So how wow. they present themselves. Are they are they looking at the judges? Are they presenting themselves properly? Are they answering questions? Are they always being the best they can be? So again, great. one of the other models of 4-H is to make the best better. So part of that is not just the projects, but also our youth. And every time working to make ourselves better. Every year coming back and hopefully doing better than we did the year before. So it's not, even though we compete against each other, really for me the core is you compete against yourself. Can you make yourself better through that journey? What a wonderful skill set to be teaching. Absolutely. That's great. Well, if someone wants to get involved in 4-H, either as a student or as a leader, um, how do they find out more? How do they get involved? Well, uh, they can certainly contact me directly with my phone number, which was a great way to reach me, is 686-7961. I have an office here in Wilden Park, Mm -hmm. which is over in Tamarack Center at 800 Research Drive. Uh, My suite is 230. Uh, I'm in and out a lot, so it's hard to catch me, so it's best to call me ahead of time. Uh, That's a really great way to kind of make sure I'm there and we can set up an appointment. All the 4-H enrollment for youth is, again, from age 5 to 18. Okay. Uh, our age, our, our, we've got a Cloverbug group from age 5 to 8, is our 5 to 7 is our Cloverbug age, and they're the non-competitive group. So they do kind okay. of more um, crafts, artistic kind of stuff, group dynamic things, okay. more fun stuff. And then sure. we showcase them at the fair as well. Okay. But it's not competitive. They're not competing against other youth. But then from 8 to 18 are where they're actually doing the projects and hands-on stuff. But okay. either way... They can get involved in that. They can take as many projects as they want. We're enrolling right now all the way through the end of February. We'll be enrolling in 4-H. Great. So please do contact. Now is the perfect time. The website, is there information on that? We'll put the website up so people can find it. Is that a good place to go? The the website is a good place. If you go to the state website, just Google... Google Colorado State University Extension, and it'll bring up the state website. On there, you can have all the contact information. Okay. It really is best to get me my my website. My local website is currently down right now. Okay. We're in the means of transferring everything from 
from Dreamweaver over to a different platform. So I have to learn that. That's a process. It is a process. It definitely is. So yeah. Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much. It sounds like a wonderful opportunity both for the kids in our um, community here as well as adults who want to get involved and help. Absolutely, Amy. That's great. Thank you so much for taking the time to come talk to us. Definitely contact Mark for more information if you're interested. Um, It sounds like there's a lot of ways to support and be a part of this great group. So again, I'm Amy Elmont. This is Mark Platten with the CSU Extension coming to you from Teller Netcast. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you.